you were doing the stuff with Booker T and the two you were together. Uh, like it was the most popular thing on Raw by a mile, and then Booker ends up going off and doing his own thing, and then everything for you just kind of fell by the wayside. They didn't really do much with you after that, but you were super popular. But that was that frustrating for you that you were one of the most popular acts on Raw, and then it just kind of went nowhere. It was. It was like the first gold dust. They yanked something from me that was working. They yanked this from me too, Booker T. I know and I understand now looking back on it that they were taking him in a different direction with the world title picture. And But back then I did not and it pissed me off. It made me very sad like, like nobody gave a about all the work that I've done and all of the hard work that I've put into getting this character over. It's because I'm, I, I've never been given that shot to be in the world title picture. I've never won the world ch championship. And it sucked. So, of course, it hits me hard, and I turn to drugs and alcohol, man. And it, and it hits really hard. That's the only way that I saw that I could cope with things. And it just got out of control and went downhill from there while Booker and everybody else and the company must go on are doing great business. And all I had to do was kind of realize it, but I didn't and just keep a steady path because I've come to learn that the longer you wait, the more patient you are. They will end up doing something with you. It might not be what they, what you want, but it will be something. And it's up to us as the talent, as the, the WWE superstars, but once given that ball, you have to f make it something. They can't do it for you. So you have to go out there and you have to create magic and step out of the box. And I think that's what is missing from today's kids. They're too scared to step out of the box and go against the writers and Vince McMahon afraid that they're going to get fired. You look at Raw right now, three hours of television, you open it up with a f***ing promo to set up the match at the end of the show. Everything else is fill-in. They do have a job to do, right? Whether it's in three minutes or five minutes or ten minutes. But a lot of the kids, if given a three-minute match, they think it's impossible to go out there and tell a story. But it's not. It's not impossible. I can tell a story in three minutes. I can do what needs to be done, but I can also look the very best I can look in the three minutes if the guy's going to beat me, you know? And if he's going to beat me really good and I'm not allowed any offensive maneuvers, then I'm going to find a way to where it is him actually cheating to beat me. And I'm going to get that done. And a lot of kids are just, they go with whatever they tell them because the writers just say what Vince says. There's no creativity from the young kids the very few of them a few of them have it and it sucks man if they just step outside of the box and not be so scared i believe raw would be much better i do want to since since we're here and i brought the person's name up earlier on what do you think about becky lynch love her She's awesome. Awesome. She's is a she going girl. outside the box? She is going outside, out, outside the box, yes. So I hear a lot of people comparing Becky Lynch to Stone Cold Steve Austin. See, I don't look at it like that. Stone Cold was Stone Cold, okay. But Becky Lynch has taken something and really elevated this uh, ladies' division, the women's division. And we have some great girls there. They're awesome. They're all talented as hell. And I, I'm a big fan of the women's wrestling. Big fan. And when Becky Lynch... When Becky Lynch started doing, you know, taking it a little more serious, whether it be her being given a chance or not, but when she started stepping out and thinking for herself and acting the different way and becoming the man, then she just took off. It took off with her, and I don't see it ending anytime soon because they're f***ing in love with her, man. She is a badass. She is the Stone Cold Steve Austin of the women's division. Like, Brock Lesnar is one way. Even though Brock Lesnar can go out there and wrestle with the best of them 
and not do the throws, but actually wrestle and tell a story in a match, that's not what his job is. His job is to make you hate him, him to come in and throw you a few times and leave the building and not come back for six months. That's what he does. But people tune in to watch it because he's doing his job and he's drawing big money, just like Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and those guys. And Becky has brought a lot to the table because Becky's on fire right now and she's doing her thing. You got to keep a level head, man. You have to. I mean, tempers flare in, in our business, just like tempers flare in any business. And we get jealous and we get aggravated at one of our coworkers or whatever. We're a family. I mean, to me, the wrestlers, being around them every day for 280, 300 days a year for 30 years, they are my family away from my real family that I would do anything for them. So we have to set our differences aside and do what's best for business and go out there and do your job. There's a name that I think a lot of people are scared to mention in front of you. It's Black Rain and TNA. Because people, because it was a dark period in your life, you've said that before, you talked about it in your book, and that it's not something you fondly remember. But it is part of your story. Because you go to TNA, you're not in the best place, it's a short-lived character, um, and ultimately that ends up leading to you going clean. Um, can you talk a little bit about that low point, being there, if, you know, today, if Black Rain came along today, would it be any different? And how that led to you becoming uh, clean and getting, kind of getting everything back? Uh, the reason I don't talk about Black Rain so much is because it was a very, very dark time in my life when I got so, so f up on drugs and alcohol that I did not give a about anything or anybody, including my family. And I just saw an opportunity to go to TNA. And I saw Vince Russo was working there and he pitched this character to me. And we made this character because I knew he was gonna be hands-on with the promos of the Black Rain character, this deep, dark character that Black Rain was. And I was already in a dark place, so it fit. And it was close to my home because they only shot like once a month. And you know, I went in and I did it and I had this rat and I was just a, a kick-ass, dark, demented heel. But I never want to do it again because it, it is so such a bad, bad time in my life that I'm glad that f is behind me and then I got clean and sober because looking at it now, 11 years later, it's like there's no f way I would have ever done that if I would have just kept my head. Black Rain is... Uh, But we should, uh, we should give you major props. Uh, this year will be 11 years sober for you. So congratulations.